Hey, welcome back students. In this video, I want to go ahead and talk to you about combustion reactions. Combustion reactions are those kinds of reactions that essentially combines a substance with oxygen and what it releases is it releases a large amount of energy in the form either light uh, and heat, but some of the products that we get are carbon dioxide and water. So generally what you're going to find is you're going to have a hydrocarbon. And so let me go ahead and write this here for you. It's going to react with oxygen. And what the two products that you get here are carbon dioxide and water. So this is the hallmark of a combustion reaction. So when you see these parts in a generic re equation or reaction that you are provided with either on a quiz or a test or elsewhere, this is going to be the, the telltale sign that you know that you've got a uh, combustion reaction on your hands. Okay. So what I want to do is kind of provide you with two examples as I've been doing in the previous videos. So I'll go ahead and do that here today. I'll start off with a very basic one. This one is provided in your text. So let's go ahead and just take care of this one now. We want to go ahead and start with hydrogen gas, which is H2. And we want to react this with another gas called oxygen, oxygen gas. And when we combine these two, what it forms is, uh, excuse me, I'm going to erase this here. What it forms for you is going to be water. That's what you get when you combine these two. And our goal here is to essentially try to balance this. Now, the process that we've used for the other examples have been we divide the sheet up in left and right, and we begin with the leftmost atom. In this case, it's the hydrogen over here on the right. Excuse me, on the left. And so notice that here, the hydrogen on the left, we've got two hydrogens. So we look at the hydrogen on the right, and we notice that we've got two as well. So at least our hydrogens are balanced. Now we move on to the next atom. That's going to be oxygen on the left-hand side. And to compare it to the ones on the right, we notice we only have one oxygen on the right. So we are going to have to add another water molecule to the right-hand side to bring our oxygens uh, to a number that is equal to the number on the left. But in doing so, we increase our hydrogen count. So notice we've got now four hydrogens on the, on the right-hand side. So we need to come over here to the right-hand side. And we do need to add two more hydrogens by adding another uh, hydrogen gas uh, molecule. That gives us four hydrogens on the left. That means we've got four hydrogens on the right. The oxygens are also balanced. So at this point, we are completely done. All that's left now is to look at these groups and find out how many units we have of each. And so here we've got one, two of the hydrogen. So our coefficient is going to be a two. Our oxygens, we only needed one. So we only have a coefficient of one. And for the waters on the right-hand side, we've got one, two. So the coefficient here is going to be two. Again, if you're looking for this on a multiple choice problem, you're going to look for the problem that has the answer uh, sequence for the coefficients of 2, 1, and 2. And just as a reminder, the 2 is represented there, the 1 is represented there, and then the last 2 is represented on the right-hand side as a 2 for the 2 moles of water that you have present. So that is the first example. I'm going to go ahead and provide you another example. It's going to be a little bit more challenging, but this time we actually will use a little bit more um, sophisticated molecule. We're going to use a hydrocarbon. And so let's go ahead and use that example, and you can see how that one is balanced. So again, let me just go ahead and remind us, we're going to start off with a hydrocarbon here, and the hydrocarbon that we're going to be testing out is going to be C3H8. We're going to combine that with oxygen. And when we do, it's going to give us carbon dioxide and water. And so what we're going to try to do is balance this type of reaction. Because if you notice right off at the very, right at the very uh, onset here, we notice that we've got three carbons on the left and only one carbon on the right. And so let me go ahead and draw our line. Here's our left. Here's our right. And so we'll begin. Since we've got three carbons on the left, what we do need is we need to have at least two more of these carbon dioxides. That's one, and here's the second. So now we've got three carbons on the right. In doing so, we elevated our oxygen count, right? But before we go any further, we want to go to the next atom because notice that we've got a lone oxygen over here. So eventually, we're going to have to adjust that, right? And so in order for us to do that, let's go ahead and balance out the hydrogens, which is the next atom on the, on the left-hand side. We've got a total of eight hydrogens here on the left. So if we look at the right hand side, we've only got two for the water. So if I add another three water molecules, that'll give us a total of eight. So that's four, that's six, and one more should give us the eight, and there we go. 
We've got eight hydrogen uh, atoms on the right hand side. We've got eight hydrogens on the left. Our carbons are balanced. All that's left to do now is to balance our oxygens. So we'll begin by counting what we've got on the right hand side. We've got a total of two, four, six, and then we've got seven, eight, nine, ten. We've got a total of ten oxygens on the right hand side. So that means that we need to have a total of ten on the left hand side. So we're going to add two, so that gives a total of four. Here is six. If I add another one, that will give us eight oxygens, and one more oxygen molecule will give us a total of ten. So now our oxygens are balanced on both sides, the carbons are balanced on both sides, as well as our hydrogens. So all that is left for us to do is to count how many groups we've got of each of these compounds, or molecules, in the case of oxygen. And so here we begin with the C3H8, we've only got one, so our coefficient is one. For the water, excuse me, for the oxygen, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So the coefficient here is going to be five. If we go on to the right hand side and count our carbon dioxides, we've got one, two, and three of those. So the coefficient on the right side is three. And if we turn our attention to the waters on the far right, we've got one, two, three, and four, leading, leaving us a coefficient of a four. So if this was a multiple choice problem, we want to go ahead and make sure that we look for the answer with the following coefficient sequence. One, five, three, and four. Again, the one represent is represented there as the mole number for that compound, the five for the five oxygen atoms, or five oxygen molecules, the three for the three carbon dioxide compounds, and the four for the four water compounds that we've got in this reaction. This is a balanced reaction, and this is the way we balance combustion reactions. Okay, So hopefully you've enjoyed the series that we've done here on balancing uh, chemical reactions. Keep watching. There's another video involved with activity series, but go ahead and explore them all, and hopefully you keep learning. And if you ever want to, rewind it and watch it again and again until you get it right. See you in class.